There is a common saying that goes, curiosity killed a cat. It is a very useful saying, teaching people to make poor decisions that could ultimately lead to their demise. Unfortunately for some people to allow some curiosities get the better of them and eventually consumes them, Kelly was one of those people. It took place on Sunday, October 31st, 2004. It was Halloween, which was Kelly's favorite time of the year. She thought it'd be a good idea to decorate her front door with some cheap decorations to let the kids know that she was handing out candy. At at least, at least 12.35 p.m., she drove to her local dollar store to buy some Halloween candy and decorations. While browsing, she found a shelf full of VHS tapes. She looked through them and her eyes fell upon an old copy of Alice in Wonderland from Disney's Classics of 1951. Wow, I haven't seen this movie in a long time, she said to herself. Excitedly, Kelly decided to purchase it along with the candy and decorations. When she came back home, it was still too early for trick-or-treaters to be out, so she took some time to prepare the front door. She continued decorating and filled a large pumpkin-shaped bowl with candy. By the time she was finished, it was nearly 4 p.m. She checked to see if there was any more decorations to put up. When she looked inside the plastic bag from the dollar store, she saw that there was the Alice in Wonderland VA chess box sitting all by itself. Oh, I forgot about this. Maybe I could watch it before the trick-or-treaters arrive. Kelly had the VCR and DVD player into their living room, so she opened up the box to watch the movie. Something about it seemed to be strange about the tape. The movie's logo was on the front, but if, as if someone had tried to scratch it off with a knife, Kelly figured that it might have been a used copy. She took the movie out of the box and then, then noticed a strip of masking tape at the bottom of the video. The cassette with the words, Play Me, was written very poorly as if a child had wrote on it. That's weird. Maybe someone was just trying to, to be cute at the dollar store, she reassured herself. She closed her curtains and turned on the television and the lights off, and then she put the tape into the VCR. Kelly was shrouded by darkness, perfect to watch a movie. As the opening title cards were playing, Kelly laid herself down on the couch and excited to be watching her favorite movies from her childhood. The movie started off normally, with nothing out of the ordinary. The picture was a little faded, but it was tolerable for a used copy. For about 10 minutes, the movie played just fine. When it got to the scenes showing Alice inside the bottle she drank from, um, strips of static started appearing on the screen. What's going on? Kelly asked, starting to get frustrated. Please don't crap out on me. Suddenly the entire screen went to static and the movie was gone. Oh, come on! Kelly became angry and got up to see what was wrong with the tape, so she headed over to the television. The picture came back on, but only this time, it wasn't Alice in Wonderland. It was an old home video. Kelly was upset and decided to, to not fast forward the tape, curious to see what the previous owner could have possibly recorded over the tape. The picture quality was not really good. The footage looked like it came from a 1970s home movie cin camera cinema, with the video of the walls of the group of children gathered around the table with a little girl sitting at the end of it. They all had auburn hair as she wrote a dress similar to that Alice wrote, wrote, wore. They were all singing happy birthday. To her and someone, most likely her mother, bought, brought out a cake and lit the candles to set in front of the girl. She blew the candles and everyone started cheering. Kelly thought it was strange for someone to record this girl's birthday over the movie, but she kept watching just to see what happens next. As she made her way back to the couch, the video then jumped to a children's chasing each other with a game of tag out in the large field. After about two minutes of tag, the video suddenly cut to static and it made Kelly's heart skip a beat. She was laughing it off and continued watching the movie. After a few seconds, Alice in Wonderland was playing again as it started with Alice and with left Tweedledee and Tweedledum in the, the in the dumb in the woods. For about a few minutes, nothing happened at the movie. When Alice met the talking flowers and listened to them sing, the video cuts to static again. As the pictures became more apparent, it showed some children earlier playing Ring Around the Rosie with the birthday girl in the middle of them. They were in the same field that they were playing tag in moments before, and the camera filming was all in the high angle, possibly from a two-story window. Unlike the previous video segment, this one had no sound. The children were constantly spinning around the little girl holding their hands and together in a giant ring. After about a moment of silence, Kelly could barely hear the children's voices who were whispering simultaneously. This is what she heard. 
Ring around, dear Alice. Her heart is filled with malice. Alice, Alice, she soon shall die. Kelly, f Kelly felt uh, like, like um, very disturbed by this horrific rhyme. The video suddenly cut off with loud static, and Kelly gasped as she, she held her he hand to her chest. She thought that it would be wise to stop watching the movie, but she felt that she had to know what was the rest on the tape. As the movie came back, it was on the scene where Alice meets the blue caterpillar. Kelly sat herself up and continued watching the movie. The video continued playing normally until it got to the Mad Hatter's tea party. B. Before the Mad Hatter and the March Hare could sing a very merry uh, um, birthday, the video jumped to static again and Kelly felt a lump in her throat. There was a sound this time, but the image was distorted and hard to distinguish. Kelly could hear a little girl's voice. Mommy, I'm not lying. There's a monster that hides in my room. I can't sleep and it watches me at night. Please, you have to believe me. She sounded really upset and at the point of tears. I am sick of hearing this, her mother said angrily. You're eight years old. There are no such thing as monsters and you should know better. But mommy, I had enough. That's it. Her mother screamed at the top of her lungs. Kelly could hear the girl sobbing softly as her mother stomped her feet. Suddenly, the picture shook violently and became clear. The video was of a little girl sitting on the chair and staring at the floor. She had tears rolling down her face and looked as if she had been beaten. Bruises covered her arms and face. Mommy, what are you doing? At this time, the girl looked very worried, dreading what her mother was about to do. In a few moments, her mother walked towards her, and, her, and she was off the screen something really messed up happened kelly's heart started pounding in her chest but she couldn't take her eyes off the screen the girl's mother took a knife in one hand and attacked her and and of course i am going to scrape those lines off and with that she placed a sharp edge of the knife into the girl i just couldn't kelly couldn't you could see the the silvers of blood uh, fall but of course the, as the girl screamed in agonizing pain Kelly felt suddenly nauseous. She got up and ran to the kitchen sink and vomited. As Kelly washed out her mouth, the the video went back to Pearson static, making her scream. Then slowly crept back to the couch, keeping her eyes glued on the screen. As the movie came back to Alice walking away from the tea party, disgruntled and the, with the Mad Hatter in March hair. However, the video segments where Kelly had felt that who was filming these terrible things happening to this little girl. The movie got to the scene where Alice was getting lost in the in Togli Woods again. The screen then filled with static and only lasted for a few seconds before cutting to a video of the girl sitting in front of the edge of the bed, crying into her hands. The room she was in was very dark. Very everything behind her was cast in the shadow. For nearly three minutes, she just sat there crying. Not once she looked up. Every few seconds she would stop and say, Nobody loves me. After a while, the door opened off camera, letting up dim light in her room. Slowly, Shadow Figure enters the room and floated towards the girl. She looked at the figure with her eyes shot wide open, and she began to plead, No, please! Her cries were abruptly severed by the deafening static. Kelly screamed so loud that her she covered her ears. After the static died down, she gained the courage to open her eyes, and the movie came back on with Alice going to the Queen of Hearts courtyard. All the bright colors and silly moments of the film could not steer Kelly out of her deep-seated fear. Kelly then began to gain hope that the hellish video segments were over and that she could watch the movie in peace. Then the trial scene approached and the picture gradually faded to static. Kelly's heart dropped as she started sobbing. This time, the static lasted over two minutes. Kelly's heart sank, raced in anticipation upon the upcoming video. When the video disappeared, there was nothing. The living room was filled with a deafening silence. Kelly became a short out of breath and was started hyperventilating. For several seconds, there was a couple of si complete silence. Kelly thought the movie was over, but the tracker on the VCR said that the tape was still playing. After for a short while, Kelly could hear something. It sounded like children whispering. She could not make out what they were saying. Kelly panicked when she noticed a dark picture slowly enveloping the screen. It was a photo of a little girl sitting on the edge of her bed again secluded in darkness this time she was not crying this she was straying straight at kelly through the screen her eyes are bloodshot from so much crying and she and the look on her face was a pure horror her eyes shouting help me 
The only light in the girls' bedroom seemed to be coming from the glow of Kelly's television. The image was so clear that they could easily be been sitting in someone's same room. Kelly could hear the little girl crying again. However, she was still glaring throughout the screen, not moving an inch. As Kelly looked past through the girl's shoulder, she made out what happened with a faint set of crooked teeth with a fixed smile. The teeth had appeared to be human, but they enlarged and they were stretched out too wide to be that of the form of a natural person's mouth. The voices joined in with the madding chorus. All kinds of them could be here whispering, off with her head. Over the next minute, the little girl's crying and the voices grew louder and more hysterical. Kelly had to cover her ears. Suddenly, everything felt silent and her heart pounded as she uncovered her ears. Then one final deep voice said menacingly, Off with her head. Static then flashed over the screen for a fraction of a second. The picture then began to move. The little girl's head slowly fell forward as if she was going to cry again. It dropped lower and lower until it fell off. The instant of her head fell off, the blood curling screams filled the room. As Kelly covered her ears in terror, she screamed and so loud that she could could hear the video going to static one last time. The end credits of the movie started rolling. Kelly could not speak. She was traumatized and she stared at the blank screen. By this time, it was around 5.15 p.m. As Kelly slowly started to get up, she kept her eyes on the screen to make sure nothing was about to show up on it. Her consideration was broken by the cell of the doorbell ringing. She screamed and shot her head around to see the front door. Just breathe, Kelly. You're all right. Everything's okay. Just relaxed. Kelly collected herself and turned the lights to see on who, and headed for the door. It's just an early trick-or-treater. Before opening the door, something told her to look for the peephole first. When she did, she saw something that froze her. On the doorstep was the little girl with her head down. She was wearing Alice's dress. Calm down, Kelly. You're just a little freaked out over the movie. It's only a kid in an Alice costume. She grabbed the candy bowl and opened the door. When she got ready to hand out the candy, she dropped the candy bowl in ter horror. The little girl had vanished. Kelly trembled terribly as she picked up the candy and put all the candy back into the bowl and slammed the door behind her. You have to relax. You're just seeing things. When she put the bowl back in the kitchen table, the television had cut to loud static as Kelly screamed and turned towards the living room. Tears rolled down her face. Written on the wall above the television in blood were the words, Off with your head. Kelly frantically tried to get out for the front door, but the door was locked. Suddenly she could hear something crawling the door violently like a bear. She looked for the people again. She saw nothing but black. As if a fuse broke, all the lights in her house went out at once. She was submerged in total darkness, and she could see absolutely nothing except... At the end of the narrow hallway was something in her bedroom door. It was a set of garled teeth fixed into a smile. Kelly was paralyzed in fear. Who's there? The smile floated towards Kelly, and she tried to run away, but found herself unable to move in a movement. The shadow monster was right in her face. She could smell the horrible stench of rotting flesh of its breath, and it whispered to her, Off with your head. Later that same night, the girl the name of Abby Lawrence had just finished trick-or-treating in her fairly costume and she and and was 10 and her mother let her go by herself with friends for the first time she and her mother lived about a block away from kelly when she returned home her mother gave her a huge hug and helped her get ready for bed did you have fun trick-or-treating with your friends abby yeah my bag is full of candy it will probably last me till next halloween said abby i'm glad you had fun sweetheart hey mom you gotta see this abby ran ran to her bagging of halloween candy then she pulled out a copy of Disney's Alice in Wonderland on VHS. Where did you get that? Her mother asked. One of the houses I went to had it in the candy bowl. The bowl was empty, but it, this movie was in it, and it could barely control her excitement. Can we watch it tonight? Pretty please? And that, my little pretties, was Alice in Hell. A Alice in Wonderland um, lost movie creepy pasta written by A. L. Green. Uh, my final thoughts on the story: This is actually a decent and really well-made creepy pasta. I'm not gonna really lie. This is actually a decent and well-made um, movie creepy pasta. Now I'm gonna sit here and say this right now that this story actually was quite interesting, but although it was pretty scary, you know, seeing um. 
The protagonist basically, you know, gets a copy of VHS tape of Alice in Wonderland at a dollar store and watches it and sees, you know, that there's like another, um, uh, there's like a realistic girl named Alice who ends up getting, you know, mistreated by her mother that was replaced, you know, in parts of the movie and all that. I would have to say that would, that's kind of messed up, you know, in a sense. Now, I do know that this story was kind of cliche at the beginning. You know, it's kind of... But I'm going to get to the cliches in a bit. This is an older story. I think I should make a disclaimer. Seeing that this is like an older story. So I'm not going to be too harsh on that. So it's an older story. I'm not going to lie. This one is an older story. So I guess there's that I want to say. Is that it's like it's just a... It's a older story. I think this was written back in 2013 or 14. I think around that time, not exactly sure, but I really would have to say when I first heard about this story, I've heard like a couple narrations of this story, and one of them I actually heard, I think the first one who narrated was Obscured Domain. I think that's who it is, but yet again, maybe maybe I'm wrong. I really don't know cuz I haven't um read this story in like a while but this story actually was pretty freaky now i've seen darkness tales have narrated this story as well as um lady mccreepista or something i'm not really sure how to pronounce the mccreepista like her last name but lady this what because this story was actually pretty good now i will have to admit that the beginning you know somebody finding the, the vhs tape in like a dollar store or something like, I know that's cliched because, you know, other stories have done this one. But I would have to say it's still a pretty good concept for what this is. Now, this story honestly has a pretty good concept for what this was. Now, I really do like how, you know, the story had a really good good ending. Like, the ending basically somebody, you know, a kid dressed up as, Al as a fairy gets the VHS tape. And I have a feeling that, you know, the young girl's going to be traumatized by, you know, what was displayed in the pasta. And I would have to say the grammar of this story is really good. I like the grammar, the sentence structuring, and the storyline of how it went out. It's a really awesome story. I would have to say it's a pretty good um, concept. Now, I would have to say is that I really do find this story to be enjoyable, really well made in detail, and... I do like how everything all went out, so it's a pretty good, pretty good concept. So, I would have to say, when I first watched this story, I honestly really liked how it all went out. Now, I actually, at first, I was kind of, um, this story, at first, kind of, well, unnerved me. But I would have to say, it did unnerve me at one point. At first, you know, I thought this was, you know, a cliched story like most creepypastas do. But, it actually was pretty good. Now, the one cliche I did notice in the story, and I'm sure most of you guys did, was the getting the VHS tape from a dollar store. That's actually been done so many times in other pastas. So, I mean, it's not terrible. This was written back um, before creepypasta cliches became, you know... Um, really annoying and becoming an issue. This was written back before cliches became, you know, really bad. So, I'm gonna give it that. This was written back before cliches were, well, getting repetitive, but, yeah. I know this was an, this is an older story, so it's definitely that. And the fact that, you know, there's this, you know, girl being mistreated by her, well, mother. Her mother, you know, says, oh, there's no monsters under the bed and all that. It's actually quite creepy. But I would have to say, some of it I did not say in the in the story was kind of not necessary. There was like some parts of it that kind of was not really that necessary. But at the same time, I know this is an older story, so I'm not going too harsh. So, there's definitely that. I still find this story to be enjoyable, don't get me wrong. It's still an enjoyable story. It took me so long to get to this one, but I would have to say, this story is definitely... a. Uh, was definitely something. Like, I mean, it's not a terrible story, but it's still an interesting concept for what this one is. So, to be completely honest, I love how this story went out. It's an amazing story. It was definitely well written, and there's definitely a lot of time and effort into this story. 
So with that being the case, that being said, um, I'm gonna sit here. But besides the cliched, you know, you know, beginning of it was a little cliche. You know, having um, somebody going to a store and buying the VHS tape. I get that this is an older story, and it was written back before creepy pasta cliches became, you know, an issue. So I'm willing to give it benefit of the doubt on that one. But it's still a pretty fun story. Still really fun, really well made. Still find this one to be enjoyable. And if you guys want to read it, it's on the regular Creepypasta Wiki. And I highly recommend you check it out if you haven't. So, to A.L. Uh, to a. Green, great job with the story. This was amazing. I had a fun time narrating this story. This was awesome. Keep up with the good work. And I want to know if you did some other great work. Because I would really like to check out your other great work on this story. So... I guess with that being the case, that being said, I'm going to sit here and wrap up the review. Like I'm going to say right now, and like I always continue to say, this is simply my own personal opinion, and if you happen to disagree with me, that's fine too. We're all entitled to our own opinions in regards to these um, creepypastas, and this is simply my own personal thoughts. My thought rate of this story would have to be a 9.5 out of 10. I'm giving it a 9.5 out of 10 because of how really well, beautifully well written this one is. Especially with the grammar and the sentence structuring. The story seemed to be a pretty good concept, even though it's an older one. But the only thing I wasn't crazy on was the VHS tape cliche. Like, I'm not going too, too harsh on that one because this is an older story. So, I'm giving it benefit of the doubt because, like, this was an older story. But I still found this one to be enjoyable, regardless. Now, anyways, with that being the case, that being said, what did you guys think about this creepypasta? Did you all enjoy it? Did you all not? Also, what do you have done person to help make this story a lot better? Feel free to leave me now what your thoughts are down in the comment section down below. I'm the Queen of Lions. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. And if you happen to be brand new here on this channel, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Because I make brand new videos every single day. Don't forget to ring the notification bell to when I upload. So then that way you guys will not miss an upload. And as always, please roll the outro. Because I'm out.